Alright. Um, yes, Robin. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, Piper, go ahead. Can you use, like, just, like, your phone or just a professional camera for you? Oh, I always use a professional camera. Always. <laughs> yeah. I think that was like F3.2, like, wait, I have oh, okay, a nice, huh? This three fixed length, uh, fixed focal length, 50 millimeters. 3.2 exists? Huh? Well, this 3.2 exists. F3.2 exists. Yeah. Look at it. Um, what is that a picture of? Anyone know? It's that. It's, it's actually, um, it's like a bunch of photos stitched together. So just concentrate on one of those. This is a cutaway view of a, um, the inside of a sewing machine. Yeah, that. Uh, so here's a picture that'll mess with your mind. Stare at that for a second. Let's go this from the still too early for this. We're all about our animated gist today. So, uh, explain. What's this guy here? Alright, we just talked about how those connect, right? This is, this is, in fact, it even says really small. Why? equals sine theta. That's what it says right there, in fact, for the people who can't see that. All right, well, uh, this is, I guess, also y equals sine theta over here. What about this guy? Yeah, what is it tracking along with? It's tracking with the x-coordinate. So that actually says, even though it's very hard to read, x equals cosine theta, okay? Cosine. Isn't that therapeutic? Watch it. You can you can go back to this PowerPoint and just over and over again watch it if you like at a later point. I'd have to get the stone. All right, uh, it's true that you I think fully understand where sine comes from, and you just tried to make we've just tried to make very clear in a couple ways the connection between our prior knowledge about the unit circle and the actual values of the sine function at different things at different places, and we've connected with that with the height. And we understand, I think, pretty fully where this picture comes from, the sine graph. Um, the same can be done with cosine, too, obviously, right? So, what's well, the cosine is zero? Does it make sense that it's one in this picture here? For your prior knowledge? I think it should, right? Uh, so, sine in the last picture, we just, I hope you have an understanding about sine cosine, um, but that last picture, animated picture, presents. The sine kind of quantifies the height of a thing rotating around a circle. The cosine captures the horizontal position, so sine captures the distance a point is as it travels around the unit circle, away from the x-axis. Sine quantifies the distance away we are from the x-axis, so yes, if you're in the y-axis, yeah. Wait, so with the x, with, with the x and y, you're saying, so the x and y, you're saying, so Yeah, I, to be clear, to be clear, I've just changed x's and y's here on you. But um, yeah, on the last graph, we were thinking of like why the y coordinate on the unit circle is actually equal to the sine of the angle, right? It's like quantifies the height. When is sine at its biggest? When you're here, right? As you're rotating. When is sine at its smallest? Here. When is it zero? Here and here. That, that's the quantifying the height away from the x-axis that we are. That's what sine is kind of doing. And what does cosine do? Again, think about this as being maybe x cosine theta, if you want to do a change of variables here. What does that do? As we rotate around, when is cosine at its biggest, uh, you know, most one and negative one? Well, it's here and here, right? Is when cosine is that farthest away from the y-axis. And when is it zero? Well, it's when it comes close. It, 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 it makes sense based on the definition. Um, so if you're into like function dancing, um, you, you should kind of remember sine as being like this move, right? Right? That's going to be huge at the next party. And cosine is being like this, right? Okay. You got to get a little slow-mo action in there. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, those, those should be in your head for sure. Um, and I think they already are. It's just been a little while. So. Um, now I'd like to think about uh, maybe some... A little bit of transformation, a little bit of throw some A's and B's and H's and K's in there too. But again, should be I think review, but let's kind of say something about those. You know what any of those letters mean or what they do for us? I'll be out. Ready, ready, go. Anyone take any letter and just tell me what you think you know about it. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Amplitude is like a word I think I I, I remember from last year in my trade knowledge. 
Give me another one. Anyone have another thing going on there that you can tell me about what what one of those letters does, the action it takes on the graph? He's like the period. Yeah, B uh, acts as a horizontal stretch or shrink on the graph, doesn't it? I mean, it's just like unit one style uh, saying what that is. You also use the word period. For now, uh, we'll think about some more, but for now it's, it's sufficient to say that it changes the period of the graph. For the period, by the period we mean like the length of the, length of the cycle or something. Um, anyone want to take one of the other letters? H and K, I haven't said anything about yet. Yeah. Do I have a question? H, um, yeah, so using the language of transformations, that's a left right shift of some kind. Yeah. And K would be some kind of vertical shift, up or down. Okay. Yeah, and we have these other technical words that we have for these things too. Uh, we've already heard, that we already had these come out. Amplitude, someone said, right? And um, and instead of, and B, we said affects the period. Uh, the period of the graph, that makes, it's like the size of a cycle, one, one round of the graph. And um, H, actually I heard someone say it. What is H also sometimes called besides a, a horizontal shift left and right? So it's called a phase shift. Um, so I'll put these up here too. A is the amplitude. Actually, it might be more accurate to say that the absolute value of A is the amplitude. We usually report the amplitude as being positive, even if it's A carries us a negative sign. Um, a has the power to do that kind of stuff. There you go. Right. Uh, now, some of you might remember the period as the like secret formula, magic formula is two pi over B, or three sixty over B if we're doing one degree. But of course, it's not a magic formula. It just makes sense based on what did you say B has the power to do? Like, let's actually think about what is, in, in terms of like a function, if you have a function, uh, we'll talk about sine of 2x maybe, but like in general, what is f of 2x in relationship to f of x? What, is, what does it do? What's f of 2x? What does that do? It's a transformation of some kind. What does f of 2x mean? Yeah, it actually, uh, skinny, uh, skinny here is like a pejorative term. Are we going to avoid use that, using that term, maybe? Yeah, but a horizontal shrink would be a fair way to say it. Yeah. Um, horizontal shrink on the graph uh, by a factor of a half. So what's the original period of the, like the natural period of the sine function? You just did it normal today. 2 pi. So what's the period then if there's a horizontal shrink by a factor of a half? Isn't it now pi? All right, and then in general, what would the period be for sine of bx? If you just said it's normally 2 pi, but here it's pi, what'd you do? Didn't you, didn't you just divide by 2? I'm just saying, so in general, what's the period going to be if it's the sine of bx? The, sine, the period of the function sine of bx would be 2 pi over B, wouldn't it? Is that clear? I just want to make sure you're, like, this is not magic, it's just unit one transformation knowledge just coming into play, isn't it? But don't, don't, because I think a lot of people are like, oh, I just memorized that. H is, someone said, the phase shift, sometimes it's called, so we have these, like, and Y equals K is sometimes called, like, equilibrium or the sinusoidal axis, the midline, a couple ways you can say it. Um, but people use these terms, so I just want to make sure you're aware of them. It's completely true, though, that if you know exactly what the graph of sine looks like, and you do, because you just like we're really pros at making that for the warm up today, then you can just use your unit one knowledge to knock these out, right? Using transformations knowledge. So actually, a lot of you already did this. So we won't answer this question, but I was going to ask: Can you describe the role of A, B, H, and K with the language of transformations? I think you already did. Didn't you? So, so, but we also have these terms that people use. So just make sure you're aware of them. And you can use them. Um, I also have a very exciting Desmo staff work for us. I know, I know. There it is. There's sine of x, the graph you graphed in the warm up today. Um, what happens if we adjust a? If I make a two instead of one, for example, is that what you expected to happen? Good. What happens if we make a negative one?
Is that what you expected? Okay. I want to stop it right at one. Ah. All right, what about B? What happens when I just B make, what if I make B two? We just talked about that, right? It should be true that if B is two, then the new period is instead of being two pi, should be pi. Is that what you expected to happen? Yeah. Question, what happens if B is negative one? Have you ever thought about that? What? <laughs> I guess I'm asking, what does the graph of sine of negative X look like? I don't want to show you yet. What happens if I make this negative one? What does it do? Yeah, it flips it across the y-axis, Corinne says, um, over here. Is that right? And for f of negative x, just in general, for any function, f of negative x, x represents a, a, a flip over the, over the y-axis, doesn't it? We'll see if she's right. Yeah. But that also seems like it's... That seems like it's also, um, it's like looks like it's also a reflection over the, like you could describe that as being a reflection. So what if we did both? What if we made A negative 1? Wait, does that mean that negative sine of negative x, which is what we just graphed, negative sine of negative x, is that the same thing as just sine x? Yeah. Apparently. Okay. Let that bake your noodle. Okay. There's B. Let's uh, let B go. The slinky action. Boom. Zring, zring, zring. That's good stuff, man. B. B is fun. H and K do the things you probably predict, right? I don't. Let's turn on cosine too. Let's get cosine in there too. All right. Um, have a great Thanksgiving, you guys. Please do homework one. When we come back on, on Monday, we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing more of the same. So we just got to get back to your friends. Robin, why that song?